Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 26. In this tutorial we are going to make our main menu look a little bit prettier rather than just the whole default scene look. Uh, we'll create a splash screen and we're also going to link some scenes together. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I briefly explained last tutorial that a main menu doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's plain, simple, you know, just a static image. You could actually build a scene behind it and make it like a proper kind of um, actual screen itself, right? You know, so it looks animated, but it's not. It's an actual scene. So what I'm going to come up with today is a quick little uh, scene, show you something a little different that you can make it look kind of interactive with. So let's go to 3D object and uh, let's add in a terrain. Obviously at this point terrain has changed if you're using a Unity 2019 or I think it's 2018.3 or above. Uh, I'll be sticking with 2018.2 for now but I do have videos on terrain. There is one in the playlist for this series. Uh, so I'm going to basically create a whole new kind of terrain, but I'm not going to go over the top with it. Uh, so we've already done terrain. We know how to add a texture. Uh, we know how to add everything in here. It's not too difficult, is it? We can remember. Uh, let's add that. Let's add in a couple of trees as well. But the main thing is to remember where the camera is. So let's get our camera position uh, to where we would want it to be because we're going to use our camera in a little bit to create a short animation which is going to be perfect for an intro scene. So let's have it probably somewhere in the middle because we'll be using animation as well with the camera. So probably somewhere about there. Let's raise the terrain all around the edges because you know why not. Uh, it's a good Probably a good tutorial to kind of recap a couple of things on terrain as well. So we're going to raise the terrain, select a brush, and just raise the terrain all around this area here, let's say. Doesn't look too bad. Looks a bit crazy, but I like crazy. Jimmy loves crazy. Okay, so let's add in some trees like we've done before. Edit trees, add tree. And let's pick one. Let's do tree 002, I guess. If Unity will click it. <laughs> oh, Unity, come on. And let's zoom in and spread us some trees around. In fact, they look too small. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the tree height some. About there. Let's add the trees around. And our camera is still round about there. Uh, let's bring it here a little bit and pan it up. You can see the preview here. Let's pan it down so we can see. And let's add some grass texture into there as well. So uh, paint details, edit details. Let's add the grass texture and add some nice grass. Add. Uh, let's just add grass all around here. Obviously, it doesn't appear because we're not zoomed in. If we were to double click our camera to zoom in to where the camera is, you will see the grass starting to appear. Uh, obviously, this does have an impact on uh, the limitations, but that's not to worry at the moment because I'm going to bring the camera down quite a lot actually, maybe to around there. Uh, oops, bring it in slightly. I, I realize that this is just kind of recapping what we've done before, but it's just to the point of doing something really cool. So what I would recommend is you build a, uh, a little, well, I guess a, any kind of scene, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm building. So I'm going to add some post-processing uh, at this point as well. So let's add our post-processing to our main camera and let's also add in the post-processing profile we already have and let's briefly look at the game option and see how it looks. 
Hopefully it doesn't look too bad. Unity is being very slow. There we go. Okay. So you can already see that it's, it's turning into something else rather than just simply, you know, being a still scene. So there's a lot that you could do with this. And I, I guess the main thing to kind of note with this is the terrain and the distance and everything. So what you can do is you can edit a couple of things here. So for example, detail distance currently set at 80. I think by default it is 80. Uh, if you were to increase it, you'd be able to see the grass kind of covers everything more now because obviously that detail distance is further away. Uh, I'm going to add in a wind zone as well because, you know, why not? So UI, uh, not UI, 3D object and wind zone. So obviously we've got trees. It's not going to make too much of a difference because I don't think these trees actually do um, bend, as it were, or do they? I can't quite remember. Let's have a quick look. If not, we'll just replace some of the other trees. And so the final thing, yeah, that'll do. So the final thing I'm going to do at this point is just quickly animate my main camera. Now, I'm not going to do anything fancy, but this is like a prelude to a cutscene. So if I bring that to zero and I tell you, Unity is being an absolute pain today. Uh, so if I bring my camera down, probably to around there, or we could, I guess, start it uh, looking directly down at the ground, which would be uh, changing the X axis to maybe 90. So you can see it's staring straight down at the ground. Uh, it doesn't look so good actually. Let's see if uh, let's see if we could change that. Wow, it looks that is cool. That is a little bug I've never found before. So if we're looking directly down at the ground, the grass doesn't appear. If anyone knows why that happens, let me know in the comments below. Uh, so let's set it as 89, and there we go. So let's have 217, uh, 8.5, and 159. So there is our default starting position. So in this instance, it's probably a good idea to make note of that. So 217, 8.15, 8.5 it is, sorry, isn't it? And 159, and obviously our rotation is 8900. 0, 0. So I made a note of that. So we're going to create a cool little animation which can be used as, like I say, a prelude to a cutscene. So let's take our camera and let's go to animation. And let's click on create. And now we'll just call this menu anim, something real simple. And obviously we will press the record button to set that first keyframe. So let's type in 217, 8.5. 159 and we also have 89 0 and 0 so they all turn red so over the course of let's say 10 seconds which is going to be 600 frames I'm not going to teach all this again because we know how we're dealing with this animation uh, I want the camera to move over this way I tell you what unity just because you're baking the light <laughs> There's no need to uh, irritate me by taking ages to do things. And I want the rotation on the X to decrease. So I'm going to decrease it probably to about there. And we'll say another 10 seconds time, which will be 1200. We will rotate on the Y probably to around there. And zoom out again and let's say another uh, 10 seconds so 600 oh, 600 add to it so 1800 and let's have the camera shift over here and pan around a little bit more probably to there and then to finish it off uh, another 10 seconds let's reset to where we were originally so 217 and 8.5 and 159 
and then we rotate it to 89 and 0. So I'm going to stop that animation there. Now this should loop round and round in a weird kind of look for, I think I think we did 4, didn't we? So 40 seconds. So let's, I think it's probably more than 40 seconds, but let's have a quick look at what this looks like now. So you can see how this animation is kind of moving around. It's not just a still image. So this main menu now actually has some motion to it. It means something rather than just being a still frozen image, which is kind of boring. So I kind of like how that looks. It's given us something extra to this main menu. Obviously you can add music to it and we will at some point, uh, but we've got you know a prettier main menu as it were. So we're gonna get back to work on uh, whatever's next so we're gonna zoom back into there then the animation starts all over again so you work with that now and you build something really cool something really awesome and uh yeah like i say it's a prelude to cut scenes so i'm going to save that scene there and i'm going to add in a new scene so file new scene and file Save scene as, and this is going to be our splash screen. So, splash screen and save. So, if you don't know what a splash screen is, all it simply is is just a way of displaying your company logo or your developer logo or your studio logo. In my case, it'd be Jimmy Vegas Game Studios. Uh, so, it's just a you know, you always see them in games, it's one of the first screens that pops up. So we're going to create a nice simple one of them and then flow into the main menu. So game object, uh, let's go with UI and let's have raw image. Uh, let's stretch that raw image all the way across the screen. Zero, 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 zero. And let's have it just simply black. Uh, next thing we're going to do is double click it so we can see. And I'm going to bring in a texture. So the logo for me. There's no point sharing this. Uh, so you, you would have your own logo for your studio. So then game object again and UI and raw image. And let's have this centered. And let's attach that logo to the texture. Zoom in so we can see it. And then just resize it. So let's have a height of 300. And let's have a width of 600. In fact, let's have that more, 700. Work with it, you know, get it just right for yourself. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm now going to create an animation on this to fade it in. So raw image, I'm going to rename to logo and animation again. Create, splash, anim, and record. And I'm going to have the color to start off with as zero on the alpha. So it fades in. So we have zero. And then we'll have it fade in over two seconds. So the 120th frame, we'll have that as um, 255, obviously. So fully faded in. So we'll have that display for a further five seconds. So we add 300 frames to what we've got because that's five seconds. So that's 420. And then we need to retype 255 on the alpha. What that means is that for that period of time, for those five seconds, it will remain white. It won't actually animate. So then for another two seconds, we will have it fade out. So that's another 120 frames onto what we have. So that makes 540. And then change the color, the alpha, back to zero. Off, press the record button to stop. And I also want to change that so as it doesn't loop. So splash anim animation and untick loop time. And let's press play and see what our splash screen looks like. I realize that's real quick, real, you know, just straight in there. But it, it could be as simple as this. You don't need to go over the top with everything. It's just nice little things that you can use. So now let's link these scenes together. So as our main menu actually is linked to our splash screen. So we go from splash to our main menu. So let's go to our scripts folder and then go to menu. Then right click create C sharp script and we'll have splash to menu and let's open it up in Visual Studio and to put it simply we've already dealt with uh, switching scenes haven't we we've done it with the respawn and uh, game over and everything so the principle of all this is going to be 
pretty much the same. It's a case of just using the scene management. There's not much more I can say to that. So uh, Visual Studio is loading up now. A little bit slow, as always. Those of you who um, code in Unity, well, Visual Studio quite often will always know Start a Visual Studio for the first time can be rather painful. I should really have it open before I even start recording. It would definitely save a couple of seconds. Okay, so here we are. We've loaded up now. So we need to add in the namespace using Unity Engine dot scene management and semicolon. So because we're going to be on our splash screen for at least seven seconds, we need to use a coroutine because we need to wait before we actually change scenes. So I enumerator, and let's call this scene change. Oh, close bracket, oh, curly bracket. And we'll wait for seven and a half seconds just to give ourselves a little bit of time. You can wait for the exact seven seconds if you want to, or however long your splash screen lasts. It's, it's your game, as I keep saying. So yield, return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, 7.5F because of the float, semicolon, and then scene manager dot load scene, up close bracket, semicolon. So at this point, we need to actually uh, attach these scenes to the build settings. So for now, if we go to Assets folder, go to File, Build Settings, let's add Open Scenes, which is the splash screen. And I'm actually going to drag this to uh, the very first scene. Next, what we can do is let's drag and drop our main menu from here into the scenes in Build. As simple as that. So now main menu is actually scene one. And what this means is that we're going to have to change a couple of other things in a, some other scripts, but we'll deal with that a little bit more. I'm sure I mentioned it previously, but like I say, we, we'll get around to that. So main menu is now scene number one. So we can close that, go back to our script and type one here. Last thing we need to do is get rid of void update. And let's get rid of that annotation. And in void start, we need to start coroutine and in brackets, the name of the coroutine you've just created. Scene, change. Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save that script. And the final thing to do, head back to Unity, and when the script has compiled, we just need to attach that to an object in the scene, and we may as well attach it to the main camera rather than add in another object. Let's keep the scene as simple as possible. So splash to menu, attach to our main camera. There it is right there save the scene and let's press play and we should be able to see this change straight to our main menu when this is faded out okay i mistimed that haven't i because it loads it fades in for two fades out for two so it's 9.5 seconds if anyone was shouting that out let me know in the comments jimmy's made a silly boo-boo so it's nine, not seven. Jimmy can't add, clearly. So let's try that once more. See how it looks. But we did see it go to our main menu anyway, so we know that works. Let's just hope the timing is more accurate now. There we go. Perfect. And there is our scene. Excellent. So next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we'll actually get uh, the buttons functioning. So we'll get, when we click new game, it will take us to our scene. And I think I'd like to go back to the skeleton at some point, because I think I'd like to have him randomly walk around rather than just come straight to us. So we're gonna delve a little bit more with AI as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, you build up that scene for your main menu. You make it look cool. You can use the exact same scene you used before if you wanted to, it's your game. So until the next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.